Hi, my name is Ahmed Oyenuga and behind me is the interactive air quality map. If you're following the Artivist Engineering project on Design Spark, you may have already seen this project. What you may not know is what it is and why it exists. So let me start by answering the why. Back in 2021, Design Spark said, Hey Ahmed, we have this environmental sensing kit for you. Can you do something fun and interesting with it? And I said, sure, I can try. To be honest, before then, I gave no thoughts to air quality, but I used to work as a network engineer and a big part of my job was moving around Lagos and installing internet links for a company named IPNX. And I remember my least favorite part of that job was by far how uncomfortable it felt to be outdoors and just moving around Lagos in general. And you know, when the initiative came around and I started to educate myself on air pollution and various pollutants I must have been exposed to, as well as the effects they could have been having, only then did I realize how much air quality contributed to that discomfort. But I knew whatever I was going to build would make more of a difference for the people that have to go through excessive traffic every day to get to work and the people that have to be outdoors in general and that's where the interactive air quality map comes in. It exists to close this knowledge gap, to help people understand air pollutants, its effects and potential ways to protect themselves. Say you wanted to know what the air quality was like in the location you were heading to, you probably take out your phone and then Google what the air quality was like in that location. And if you're doing this from, say, the US, UK or similarly developed countries, probably get an answer in the form of an index that tells you what the air quality was like in that location. You can't do the same in Lagos State or in Nigeria as a whole. And that's because we don't have publicly accessible real-time air quality monitoring systems in place. Carbon monoxide, for example, is colorless and odorless, which means you can smell or see it, but it's extremely dangerous because it's one of the air pollutants that can actually easily make its way into your bloodstreams. PM2.5 is similarly dangerous and um, similarly difficult to detect. And from my day of testing using my modified EDSK, I found PM2.5 through 10 to be consistently high throughout. To address this lack of awareness, I need to communicate air quality information to as many people as possible. And to do this, I need to present data in an easy to understand format because not everyone would understand or even relate to raw air quality indexes. Colors, on the other hand, are a different story. So the map takes the air quality index from the logger and translates it to a visual system that's able to effectively communicate air quality levels to people. The plan is to have a bunch of these maps all around Lagos, so anybody in proximity to the map can touch an area of focus and instantly get a sense of what the air quality is like in that location. So if a person has a pre-existing respiratory condition, they know to plan accordingly or altogether avoid that area. This can also be used to inform spikes in NO2 due to excessive traffic or high levels of PM2.5, which is also generated from a vehicle's combustion. For the map to work as intended, it needs to connect to a sensor network. As I mentioned earlier, such a network does not currently exist. So I'll be focusing my efforts over the next couple of months into setting up an air quality monitoring network in Lagos State. I also want to make the governing bodies in Lagos take air, air pollution more seriously and to help them by providing valuable information on air pollution, information that can then be used to set regulations and regulations that I hope will potentially save lives in the future. And the way I plan to do this is using my one superpower, which of course is engineering.